Please tell me what happened in Skellitz. I have a kin there. Sigismund's army appeared out of nowhere. There were so many of them, not just infantry, but cavalry, too. And those foreign mercenaries with their strange helmets and the, the souls of beasts. Heavens above! We all ran towards the castle for shelter, but they were too fast for us. They slaughtered everyone they caught and torched their houses. I barely escaped and they... They killed me. They murdered my parents. God bless you, boy. I'm terribly sorry for your loss. Intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady, uh, um, no, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, um, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a servant. I was going to. But to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace. To let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry, I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. Although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it, if you feel like it. I'll be right. I'll tell you what happened. It was terrible. Unexpected. The day started just like any other. Father sent me into town on some errands. A fellow by the name of Kunish owed money to Father, who sent me to collect it from him. Only Kunish had no intention of paying. It got a bit heated, as often happens when there's money involved, but Kunish still wouldn't cough up the coin. Father was too generous for his own good. Letting even a scoundrel like that buy on credit. Oh. When I'd done all the errands, I headed back home. I promised Father I'd help him with his work, and I was looking forward to it. He was forging a sword for Sir Radzi. Father and I always chat in the forge. On that particular day, I asked him if he'd teach me swordsmanship. He said no. He said it's better for a man to keep his head on his shoulders than lose it over some pointless heroism. If only you'd known what fate had in store for us. Oh. 
But Sigismund's horde was already on the horizon, ready to attack the town. I saw smoke on the horizon from a village Sigismund pillaged on the way to our town, which was soon to meet the same fate. God have mercy. And then death descended on Scalitz. Father told me to take shelter at the castle while he went to get mother. She was stranded in the town, surrounded by Sigismund butchers. And then I saw him knocking down one cumin after another. I never saw him fight like that. But then the leader of Sigismund's raiding party, a knight in full armour, saw father and charged at him. He cut down my father without a thought. And then he turned on my mother. And he murdered her in cold blood. You poor boy. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. I ran to the castle like our neighbours to take cover, but I didn't make it. I had to find another way to save myself. The men on the battlements called down to me to flee to Town Road and warn you. I was lucky I knew a concealed path around the castle. I no longer heard any sounds of battle coming from the castle, so Sigismund's army must have regrouped and started preparing for siege. No doubt you're right. Then I heard a scream. It was Teresa, the mill wench. She'd been caught by a gang of human savages who planned to violate her. I wanted to help her. God knows I wanted to. Even though I had the sword we made for Sir Adzik, they had me outnumbered and they were well armed too. I only just managed to grab one of their horses and ride off. I couldn't help her any more than I could have helped my parents. It wasn't your fault. I'll never forget the horror. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. That's terrible. How could something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. Oh, you poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy, and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me and my husband either. Although, in comparison to the horrors you went through... I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Pribislavitz, and killed many of our men, even the old Chamberlain. He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old and all of a sudden, I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from Divish's friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom. And only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Havel punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir Divish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly. Only 
He has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg. After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you're still young and beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. But what am I doing bothering you with this? You have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my lady. Wake up. You don't want to miss this. What is it? What's happening? Come to the battlements. One of our patrols reported a company heading here from Scallops. 